Hi and welcome to The Running Channel. If you've just found us because you're looking to start running and don't know where to begin, welcome. And if you're a regular here, welcome back. Do keep watching because I promise there is something for everyone in this video. And we reckon you could share this with that mate that you've been badgering to start running for ages. It might just change their mind. And without further ado, let's look at all the reasons why you should get into running. Running is free. You don't need a monthly subscription or a membership. It's perhaps not the best idea though to grab an old pair of shoes from the back of the wardrobe and start doing lots of running in them because that could lead to injury. But new shoes don't have to be super expensive. And ladies, it might be wise to grab a good sports bra as well. But aside from those things, it's up to you how much or little you spend. Yeah, that's right. Once you have some kit and trainers, Running really doesn't have to cost the earth. You really don't need lots of fancy kit unless you get really into it and feel like it. <laughs> no one is gonna judge you on what you were, kind of, and certainly not the running community. We're a proper friendly bunch. We are, don't be judgy. <laughs> Clothes-wise, there is no right or wrong. Wear what you feel comfortable in. Just try and make sure that what you do wear is made of a decent wicking material because that will help draw the sweat away from your body and will dry faster than cotton and it smells a bit less too. There is nothing wrong with wearing what you have kicking around at home to start with though. There are other freebies involved in running too. Take Parkrun for example, that's the free weekly timed 5K runs that take place every Saturday morning in 20 countries around the world. You register, grab your barcode, turn up and run 5K. You then get a text or an email telling you the time you completed it in. So if you're not ready to sign up to a race yet, the park runs a free and accessible way to see what it's like to go running with us. Yeah, and of course there is the running channel. We are your free guide to all things running. Need a question answering about running? Well, check out the rest of the videos on our channel. And if we haven't already answered it, then get in touch with us. Running improves your aerobic fitness and helps improve cardiovascular health. Not only that, but it also burns calories and builds strength, among many other things. A study involving over 55,000 people that was published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found that people who run for just five to 10 minutes a day can reduce their risk of dying from cardiovascular disease. So you really don't need to do a lot to get the benefits from running. When you first start out running, it's totally normal to experience some aches and pains. They'll usually show up after a day or two after you've run. It's called delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS for short. When you become more consistent with your running, the DOMS won't be as bad, and you'll learn to love them because you can feel how hard you've been working. Do be careful when those aches and pains become actual injuries though. A quarter of new runners ended up with at least one of the most common running injuries like shin splints, runner's knee or plantar fasciitis. The key is to add time and distance onto your runs gradually. If you're starting out running and you've not been particularly active before, the obvious side effect you'll see is that you might lose weight. Simple science says to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. So eating less and moving more. However, what you might start to notice more than any weight loss is that your body starts to change shape. You might notice a more defined waist or you catch sight of your legs in the mirror in the bathroom and wonder when they started looking quite so muscly. In studies of humans and animals, it's been found that exercise in general has huge benefits for our brain's function, with a positive correlation between physical activity and learning. Physical activity like running also reduces the levels of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. Cortisol helps the body fight inflammation and disease, but constant release of the hormone in people who are chronically stressed lessens its overall effectiveness. So being able to switch off while out on a run can help your body stay fighting fit. Taking your run outside also exposes your body to vitamin D or the sunshine vitamin. Vitamin D can not only slow the progress of bone degeneration and support your immune system, but there are also ongoing studies that have found a link between it and depression. So see if raising your vitamin D levels can help with symptoms and boost your mood. 
Ever heard of the runner's high? We've got a video all about it. It's a phenomenon that's common among runners as your running stimulates the production of feel-good chemicals called endorphins and endocannabinoids. A review of all of the studies available linking the benefit of running to improve mental health in 2020 found that running has important positive implications for mental health, particularly depression and anxiety disorders. It's important to note though that running won't make depression disappear overnight, but it can help you to manage the symptoms. Runners have a way of setting and achieving goals that they never thought possible, which can be transferred into other areas of our lives too. Have you ever watched the London Marathon on TV and thought, I could never do that? Well, there are plenty of runners who are in the same boat and have gone on to train and complete it. Goal setting gives us such a huge sense of achievement. Yeah, and not only do we get a sense of achievement from reaching our running goals, but it can also boost our self-esteem. Running marathons isn't the be all and end all of running, by the way. Conquering your first mile non-stop or run walking a 5K park run for the first time are all great goals that we can set ourselves as runners. Being able to stick with it and persevere till you hit your goal will not only boost your confidence when it comes to running, but also in other areas of your life too. If you've ever had a challenge set that you thought was impossible when you started out, but you were able to chip away consistently until you reached that goal and you actually finally achieved it, you'll know that buzz of satisfaction. Well, the same study that we mentioned earlier on about running reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease also found that overall, runners were likely to live three years longer than non-runners. Plus, data that was analysed from 14 different studies tracking the deaths of almost a quarter of a million people from four different countries showed that any amount of running was associated with a huge 30% decrease in the risk of death from heart disease and a 23% lower risk of death from all cancers. Now, there's no set amount of running that's better than the rest, but researchers did find that running more than 50 minutes per week didn't make you any more likely to avoid illnesses and disease linked to death. On the whole, running is a solo activity. You go out for a run and that's that. However, it can also be hugely sociable. Running clubs, crews and groups are springing up all over that cater for every kind of runner, from beginner right the way through to elite. If you look at the training habits of the fastest runners on the planet, you'll see they often train the running buddy or group. Hi! Hi running with others is a great way to push yourself to run a bit further or a bit faster. It's also much easier to stay accountable to go out for a run if you've been putting it off. Knowing that there's someone to run with and setting that appointment to be there can be a powerful tool in creating a habit to run. It's also a great physically distanced activity to do with friends you already have during COVID times. Should you go for a run? Why not? The most obvious way that running can help you sleep better is that it'll tire you out. When you've exercised, your body wants to recover and sleep is a really good way of doing that. As we mentioned before, running also helps with stress relief, which is one of the main causes of sleep issues in adults. Regular exercise can improve the quality of your sleep and help you sleep better through the night. You might need to stick at it for a while though. It takes about four months for your body to get used to an increase in your activity level. Aerobic exercise in particular can be effective for relieving sleep issues and has even been recommended by some doctors as a drug-free treatment for insomnia and other sleep disorders. In a study of people with sleep apnea, a three-month program of moderate aerobic exercise reduced the severities of symptoms by about a quarter. Regular exercise has also been shown to relieve other symptoms of insomnia and sleep apnea, such as daytime sleepiness, fatigue and depression. So how does running help us drop off? Well, going for a run in the evening raises the body's core temperature. When the body temperature then drops back to normal a few hours later, it signals to the body that it's time to sleep. It's worth noting though that you should consider avoiding exercise within three hours of going to bed, as that can have a negative effect on your ability to drop off. 
Most of us have busy lives, whether it's because we're parents, have a job that keeps us busy, or perhaps we're studying. Alone time can be something of a luxury. Running can give us time alone with our thoughts, without interruption, making it great for planning, thinking about decisions that need making, or even just enjoying the peace and quiet. Now we talked earlier about how running can be good for your mind. This alone time can also act as a kind of meditation. Being present in the moment can really clear your mind. We've got a whole video on this packed full of tips and a pre-run meditation. So be sure to check that out for more. Running places and getting there under your own steam using your own two feet can give a huge sense of satisfaction. It can take you to new places, perhaps by exploring the area around you and finding new paths and parks that you didn't know existed before. It's great if you're in a new area. Maybe you've just moved house or you're visiting for work or holiday. Being able to see the city or town or local area you're in by running around it is so exciting. Run exploring, the act of running and exploring at the same time is such a good way to see new places. Running up to the top of a hill might seem like hard work, but I promise you that once you get to the top of it, seeing for miles and miles is the gift that you get for all of that hard work. And once you get into running and you feel like you're ready to sign up for a race, why not look into making a trip out of it and going somewhere new? A big city marathon is the best way to see 26.2 miles of a new place on foot with thousands of other runners. So there you have it, plenty of reasons why you should start running and there's probably some in there that you might not have realised if you already run. What's your reason to run and what would you tell new runners is the best reason to run? Do you have someone in mind that you're trying to persuade to start? Tell us in the comments and we'll see you next time on The Running Channel.